I want you to know the power of setting these clear goals and having a monthly budget of understanding your cash flow and calculating your net worth. It's not just about interesting facts or intriguing information that guides your decisions, but setting specific money goals and being able to move the needle in your life so that next month, next year, 10 years from now, doesn't look the same financially for you as this month did. Welcome to the PA is in the show created by PAs for PAs where codependency with your supervising physician is a thing of the past. Optimal team practice is the future and physician associate has taken the place of physician assistant as the professional title of choice. I'm Tracy Bingaman and I'm obsessed with redefining what success as a PA looks like and what it feels like. Here you'll find the mindset shifts, systems, and processes I use to escape healthcare burnout and integrate my work into my life. Work-life balance is a myth and an integrated life where you thrive professionally, not a balancing act, is the goal here. My mission is to help you to grow into a unicorn PA who loves their job, has abundant energy, time to spare, and work optional financial freedom. The PA is in. When you are working in healthcare, it can be hard to see the forest for the trees. Are you burned out or is this a normal reaction to the stress that you experience on a regular basis? Is this a problem or just a rough patch? The burnout risk assessment is designed to help you determine your risk of burnout, identify your strengths and help you to build boundaries. Click the link in the show notes or head to tracybingaman.com slash burnout dash quiz. Spend less than a minute of your busy day stratifying your own risk of burning out in a field where burnout is incredibly prevalent. You'll get your results and a list of resources and podcast episodes that can help you at any risk level for burnout. Find the link in the show notes. I once heard this quote, if you don't measure it, you can't change it. And if you want different results in your life financially, it's time to take this quote to heart. Let's face it. If you're actually aiming to achieve specific financial goals, you're only going to achieve it if you have an actual stepwise plan to make that goal a reality. The way to create that practical plan, consistently looking at where you're at. What is and isn't working in your world money-wise and using that information to be strategic and make educated decisions moving forward with your financial plan. Before we get started, here's the PA is in review of the week. This one is entitled Side Gig. Listen to several episodes that gave me some great perspective and insight into negotiations and setting boundaries. While I didn't secure the job as posted, I was able to secure a contract job providing services as needed that is far more in line with what I was wanting. I would have never negotiated or had the tools to do so without the podcast. Thanks. We love a good five-star review and we love when you take time out of your busy day to say thank you. These reviews truly mean the world to me. I check them every week and I adore when you take the time to leave us feedback. It also helps other PAs to find the show. Bonus points if you leave us five stars and drop some emojis in your review. Head to iTunes, leave a review, and maybe you'll hear your review on an upcoming episode of The PA Is In. Okay. On this episode of the PA is in, I'm going to break down what we measure in our personal finances and how you can start measuring your own results like yesterday or at least this month. Ready? Let's do this. Okay. Money is a numbers game. As a nerdy math and science loving human, I've always loved numbers and a good spreadsheet. I know, I know, nerd alert. Numbers help me to know if we're making progress how things are going. And these numbers can clearly share if the way that I'm feeling that things are going is actually an accurate representation of how things are really going. But recently I've realized that I'd fallen into a bit of a rut with our personal finances. I needed to go deeper in order to truly understand what is working with our money and what isn't. So I decided to redouble our efforts when it comes to things like budgeting, calculating our net worth, and making sure that we're headed in the direction of our specific financial goals. So here's what measurement gives you and what looking at this data when it comes to your personal finances gives you and why it matters. So having data from tracking your income to having a budget and understanding your cash flow 
and calculating your net worth or having specific financial goals, having that data at your fingertips is a game changer. You can't know how things are going in your world financially without some of these statistics and information. This means that you can't make adjustments from a position of power or understanding how you're doing money-wise until you get a handle on this data. Nailing down your monthly budget and understanding your household cash flow means that you can make informed decisions based on real data rather than guessing or relying on a gut feeling. But the real power of nailing down this data and measuring where your money is coming from and where it is going is the insights that it provides. This data will give you clarity on what's working and what isn't. This will help you to focus your time, energy, and resources on the strategies that are really going to move the needle and improve your financial health. It will help you to see trends and patterns and make adjustments to your spending, saving, and investing. It allows you to focus on what your values and priorities are and drive you towards your money goals. First up, monthly budget. I started by making sure our monthly budgets were accurate and up to date. This year, the way that I've been paid from clinical PA work has changed. When I went from full-time to part-time, my salary adjusted down. My base salary came down to reflect that reduction in hours, and my incentive bonus increased, which resulted in a lower regular take-home pay at the beginning of the year and a more irregular income later on in the year once I hit that bonus number and it started coming home. We budget each month before the month begins, and we use something called a zero-based budget. This means that our income goes at the top. Dan's income, my income from work, my business income, any bonus or incentive that I'm getting, all of that goes at the top of the budget, and then our expenses are listed going down the page. These expenses are things that come out of our take-home pay. So before our money even comes home, we fund our 401k or 403b at work. And our expenses include things like saving, so categories like college savings, non-retirement investing for building wealth that is not restricted by retirement rules, funding our Roth IRA for investing outside of work, and things like saving for upgrades in our cars, furniture, or even improvements around our home. These expenses also include things like gas and groceries and clothing and Christmas Anything that we want to save up for throughout the year or that we're spending on a monthly basis goes into the budget. And when you get to the bottom, it's a zero-based budget because your income minus everything that's budgeted equals zero. Now, this does not mean that we're spending all of the money that we're bringing home. As, in fact, as far as our budget, um, income goes at the top, and then we do saving and investing, and then we do necessary expenses, and then we do elective expenses. So as you go down the page of our budget, things become less and less of a priority. So especially at the beginning of this year, when I hadn't met, met my incentive bonus and my take-home income was less, there were some things towards the bottom of that list that we didn't have enough money to get to because we saved first. And then some of this elective spending towards the bottom will make those categories smaller to reflect what's coming home income-wise. Next up, cash flow. Cash flow is a monthly measure of what's coming into your household and what's going out. So money in minus money out equals cash flow. Positive cash flow means that you have more money at the end of the month, the ability to save, enjoy, and have money margin in your life. Negative cash flow means that you have more expenses, both fixed and variable, than the money that you have coming into your household. If your cash flow is in the red, if you are negative cash flow, if your expenses for living and saving and all of those things are above what's coming in every month, that is something that you have to full stop address. There's two ways that you can make that better. Number one, have more money coming in. Pick up extra shifts, work more, sell things, bring more money in so that you end up with a net even or even a net positive cash flow or decrease your expenses. What are things that you're spending money on this month that you don't necessarily need to be or that you could be spending less on? So if that cash flow number is not what you want it to be, you're going to head back to that budget and make some editing and say what things can we adjust to make it so that we end up with a even or positive cash flow. The next piece of data you want to evaluate when you're assessing your financial health is to calculate your net worth. 
To keep it simple, your net worth is the difference between what you own and what you owe. So all of your assets, everything that you own, have in savings, investments, the value of your home, minus all of your liabilities, any loans, mortgages, car payments, anything that you owe anyone equals your net worth. Now, if you look at that number and you're not happy with it, there's two ways that you can increase your net worth. Number one, increase your assets, save and invest more, end up with more money, more assets in that asset pile. And the second way is to decrease your liabilities, to pay off debts, decrease the amount of money that you owe others. Struggling with what to purchase for the person on your list that seems to have everything? Check out Luna and Grace. When you shop here, you're working directly with PA owner and creator Erica, who is with you on the personalization journey from start to finish. I had her make customized Rosie the Riveter meets masked clinician tumblers for my PA and NP colleagues during COVID. Not only are they personalized right down to their names and hair colors, they're durable and super high quality. So much so that I got one for myself. Shop Luna and Grace because everyone deserves to have something special that was made just for them. It will not come as a surprise to you that when I tell you that having specific money goals is a key piece of the data in your personal finance evaluation. This is a step that people skip a lot. It's because it takes time and energy and intentionality to set these goals. All the studies tell us that when people set specific, time-bound, measurable goals, they're more likely to reach success. It's incredibly beneficial and powerful to have set money goals that you talk about and write down and clearly communicate to your partner or your accountability partner. The best goals, honestly, money or otherwise, are clear and specific. They have dollar amounts and deadlines. Now, there are several categories of money goals that are a vital part of a healthy financial future, and that is short-term goals, long-term goals, and far long-term goals. So let's tackle short-term money goals first. So any money goal that you want to achieve in the next six months, these are goals that won't take that long to reach that you can accomplish in the coming one to six months. Do not skip this step. Just because these are smaller goals that you can achieve in quote unquote just a few months does not mean that you can hop over this part of the process. These short-term goals could include items like saving, creating an emergency fund, debt payoff goals, and even personal or behavior goals that pertain to your mindset or your spending habits. Remember these specifics um, that you want these goals to be specific and have a deadline. Like, I want to add $15,000 to my emergency fund by March 1st. So short-term girls make it pretty easy to break things down into steps. So if you're looking at $15,000 over three months, that means $5,000 a month. Or $1,500 over three months means $500 a month. Then you take that piece of information and you look at your budget and you say, is that feasible? Does it fit in with your budget or lifestyle? Does your budget or lifestyle need to be adjusted in order for you to meet that money goal? Next up, long-term money goals. Long-term money goals are those things that you want to accomplish in the coming years. These should be things that you're aiming to achieve in the next one to 10 years. You can use the same formula to calculate how those long-term money goals fit into your lifestyle and budget, just like you did for short-term money goals. These longer-term goals might tempt you to be scant on the details because it feels like it's so far away, but don't do that. These long-term money goals also need specific details, numbers, and deadlines also. And then there's longer-term money goals. So any goal that's typically more than 10 years out, things like retirement, becoming financially independent, or becoming work optional. These can feel more overwhelming to calculate because you're saying, Tracy, I don't know what my life's going to look like in 10 years. I don't know what every monthly budget is going to look like between now and then. I know. Consider checking out online retirement calculators to nail down some specifics of how much money you want to have and when. You're going to calculate what those goals are to the best of your ability, a specific number in retirement or investments or buying a lake house or whatever it is that looks like that longer term money goal. And take a look at your current account balances to see where you are 
and then look at your saving and investing rates in your current budget. So you need to, so you can know whether you need to make any adjustments going forward. Now it's time to get the work. This is where the rubber meets the road. I can't stress enough how important it is to start measuring and tracking these financial specifics. It may seem super nerdy and honestly a little annoying at first, but the financial benefits outweigh the effort time and time again. I want you to know the power of setting these clear goals and having a monthly budget of understanding your cash flow and calculating your net worth. It's not just about interesting facts or intriguing information that guides your decisions, but setting specific money goals and being able to move the needle in your life so that next month, next year, 10 years from now, doesn't look the same financially for you as this month did. If you are feeling overwhelmed (laughs) by all of the things that I have said in this episode, I have just one task for you. Take a look at your monthly cash flow. Are you moving towards your goals? or away from them. It's a quick and dirty way to provide some high level insight about the health of your personal finances. From there, you can dive deeper into your budget and be real specific and intentional about setting your money goals and take time to determine your net worth. So in case you're listening to this and you're like, do I do all of these things every month? I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of how often we do them. And you can take that and apply it to your life and your lifestyle and your budget. So cash flow is something that you'll see each month as you're creating that monthly budget. So if your monthly budget balances, you're positive, you're net positive, or you're breaking even on your cash flow. If you can't balance your budget, then your cash flow is negative and you need to make some adjustments in that budget so that it does balance. Setting your money goals should be something that you're evaluating on a quarterly basis. So every three months, did you meet those short-term money goals? Are you on your way to that short-term money goal? What are your midterm? What are your longer term money goals? A net worth is something that we calculate, I would say probably every six months or so, where we're checking in on everything from retirement, non-retirement savings and investments, and just saying, hey, what's the value of our home? What's the value of our assets? What are we doing? You know, kind of where are we net worth wise? Are we growing over time? Are things moving in the right direction here? I hope that this episode has inspired you to dive a little deeper into this world of data and how your behavior and the things that you're doing on a daily and weekly and monthly basis are impacting your financial health. It's such a powerful tool that can transform your life and help you to achieve your money goals. So let's embrace the power of data and start moving towards financial independence. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to another episode of The PA Is In. If you felt like this episode was helpful, I would love it if you would head to iTunes, leave us a review, five stars, and a little blurb about what you like or love about the show. That's all for today. This PA is out. Congratulations. You've just joined an awesome club. By listening to a full episode of The PA Is In, you are officially on the Unicorn PA team. Welcome aboard. What most team members do is they subscribe to the podcast because that allows them to automatically get the latest episode of the show. The life of your dreams exists on the other side of taking action. Keep making small shifts and keep getting better. Your life will improve, your career will soar, and you will have the confidence you need to create your own success. I will see you in the next episode. This PA is out.